In this screencast lecture, we will try to understand what is the importance of various nutrients there in the cell system. Before going into the topic, we will try to understand what are the elements that have been commonly present there in any kind of a microorganism, say a bacteria or an archaeal cell. It is importantly the carbon that is dominating there in the cell system which comprises of 50 percentage in the dry weight of the cells and the next one is oxygen with 20 percentage and nitrogen that is important for the protein formation is there occupying 14 percentage, hydrogen occupies 8 percentage, phosphorus and sulfur that are all some of the major anion form of nutrients are occupying 3 percentage and 1 percentage respectively. Apart from that, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium are required commonly in traces and the next list of elements that have been required in a very small concentration. This includes micronutrient or micro elements which comprise of copper, zinc, molybdenum, boron, selenium. Among the various nutrient, first we try to look at the points related to the important nutrient carbon. All living cells require carbon and mostly prokaryotic that is bacteria and archaea require organic form of carbon for their growth. That is the reason they have been referred commonly as a heterotrophic organism. Whereas some bacteria and even plant systems are obtaining the carbon from the carbon dioxide. We have already narrated carbon constitutes 50 percentage of the dry weight of the bacterial cells. This carbon in its organic form can be obtained from amino acids, fatty acids, organic acids, sugars, nitrogen bases, aromatic compounds and numerous other organic compounds. Whereas for the autotrophic organism like cyanobacteria, carbon is obtained mainly from the atmosphere that is highly oxidized form of carbon that is atmospheric carbon dioxide is the one which is fixed there into cell carbon by these autotrophic organisms. Thus, the autotrophic organism using carbon dioxide as a sole source of carbon. They are reducing the carbon dioxide into organic carbon at the cell level. And this results in the formation of carbon to carbon bonds that is formation of the carbohydrate as well as the other carbon containing compounds in the cell. This process is conventionally referred as a photosynthesis which essentially required these two molecules especially NADPH which is serving as a reducing equivalents in order to reduce the carbon dioxide into cell carbon and this process requires energy in the form of ATP. There are certain organisms that which can able to use carbon dioxide as a Terminal electron acceptor, these organisms are mainly comes under the category of methanogens as well as acetogen. Thus, during this process in methanogens, carbon dioxide is converted into methane and in acetogens, carbon dioxide is converted into acetic acid. These two organisms are mainly anaerobic group of organisms. Now, we look at some points related to carbon in the heterotrophic organism. I have already told about the heterotrophic organisms obtain carbon from various kinds of molecules. Here in this organism carbon compounds fulfill a dual function that is carbon can serve both as a carbon compound as well as energy source there in these organisms. In some fermenting group of microorganism reduced carbon compounds can act as a terminal electron acceptor whereas heterotrophic microorganisms are extremely diverse with respect to the spectrum of carbon sources they are using for their metabolism and growth. Some heterotrophic organisms are restricted to only a few carbon compounds especially the methanotrophs that use only methane as a carbon source or methanol as a carbon source whereas some other organisms can able to metabolize and assimilate more than 100 different kinds of carbon compounds. The classical group of organisms such as a Bacillus and Pseudomonas are have an immense potential to use various kinds of organic compounds as their carbon sources. In the case of presence of energy in excess whereas some other essential nutrient such as a nitrogen may be limiting there in the cell system 
it can lead to formation of certain intracellular reserve form of carbon compound. The example here is formation of PHA that is polyhydroxy alkonate and glycogen formation or neutral lipids formation there in the cells. In the case of carbon starvation that is there is no presence of carbon there in the system. This internal carbon or energy reserved sources that is polyhydroxy alkonate or glycogen are broken down and they are converted into simple organic compounds that can able to support the cellular rearrangement as well as the adaptation of the cell to new condition. This kind of process ensures survival of the cell under some tough situations. The next nutrient which we are going to see in detail is nitrogen. It is essentially required since it is an important constituent there in most of the macromolecular elements such as proteins and nucleotides. Apart from these two things, it is also involved there in formation of phospholipids and in the synthesis of cell wall. Organic and inorganic forms of nitrogen are existing there in the nature with the oxidation states varying from ammonia to nitrate. That is ammonia is a highly reduced form whereas nitrate is a oxidized form and nitrogen is a highly oxidized form. All these forms can be used by microorganisms as a source of nitrogen. Say for example, microbes living in an anaerobic environment such as a paddy soil can able to use ammonia as a nitrogen source. Whereas diazotropic organism that is organism that are capable of fixing nitrogen that has been again narrated in the next point that is bacteria and archaea that have an ability to fix nitrogen in the that has been present in the atmosphere. It was converted into ammonia by certain group of organisms that are referred as a biological nitrogen fixers and this process is called as a biological nitrogen fixation in short BNF. This nitrogen fixers has the ability to reduce nitrogen to the ammonia level and they are getting incorporated into organic compounds especially into glutamate there inside the cell. In most of the heterotrophic organisms, they exhibit nitrogen requirement in the form of requirement of special amino acids. Especially L forms of amino acids are incorporated there into the proteins of the cell system whereas D forms of amino acids are incorporated there in the cell wall component. That is D form is dominating there in the cell wall amino acids and also in the antibiotics produced by the microorganisms. Intracellularly the nitrogen is assimilated at the level of ammonia. So whatever higher oxidized forms that have been taken inside the cell system it need to be reduced to the level of ammonia. So that is a preferable source in which nitrogen can be used there inside the cell during the metabolism. In general there is a lot of requirement of organic nitrogen source mainly in the form of amino acid is confined for microorganism that have been evolved there in the richer environment. Say for example an organism that have been present in the curd that is lactobacillus or lactic acid bacteria that generally required a huge amount of amino acids, nucleic acids and B vitamins that have been readily available in that particular environment for their growth. Again in general the growth of the heterotrophic bacteria are stimulated by addition of certain rich nitrogenous materials say the one which is rich in nitrogen is a yeast extract. It is a soluble portion of the digested yeast cell which found to contain nitrogen as well as B vitamins that are essential for the growth of the organism. So this is a reason why in most of the media you prepare in the microbiological laboratory you used to add a minimum quantity of yeast extract there into the media. Nitrogen compound serves as a major role there in the energy metabolism of this bacteria mainly reduced form that includes ammonia and nitrite that are used as a sources of energy and electron donor there in the nitrifying bacteria 
that are involved there in the nitrogen cycling. Whereas the oxidized inorganic forms of nitrogen compounds say nitrate and nitrite both are employed there by certain group of organisms as a terminal electron acceptor especially in the denitrifying group of organism in the absence of oxygen. The next nutrient of importance we are going to discuss is a phosphorus. This element has played a major role in the evolution of the life forms there and there. It is available commonly in the phosphate form and it has been an important constituent there of the higher energy compounds mainly in the ATP. They are also present in the phospholipid that have been located there in the cell membrane and in the nucleic acids. As I already told, ATP is a principal medium of energy exchange there in the cellular metabolism. So, it becomes an indispensable component there in the biosynthetic reactions of the cells that are commonly involved in the multiplication growth and metabolism of the organisms. For this reason only, while you are preparing a medium in the laboratory, you are supplying phosphorus source for the growth of the organism mainly in the form of two important chemical constituents. One is dipotassium hydrogen phosphate and another one is a potassium dihydrogen phosphate. So, these two chemicals are commonly used while you are preparing a media mainly to supply the phosphorus as well as these two chemicals serve as a buffer there in the media system, mainly to maintain the pH of the media. Intracellularly, if you look at, major fraction of the phosphorus are being contained there on the ribosomal RNA. So, the phosphorus requirement or demand increases with the specific growth rate of the cells, whereas ATP and nucleic acids forms into a minor fraction of the total cellular phosphorus content that have been present inside the cell. The next nutrient element that we are going to discuss in detail is sulfur. Bulk of the intracellular sulfur are existing as amino acids that is cysteine and methionine. The important function of cysteine is in the formation of folding of the proteins, mainly by the formation of the disulfide bridges there during the protein conformation formation. These sulfur containing amino acids are frequently found there in the reaction centers of the enzymes. When you compare this sulfur with the other element, they are commonly present there in the coenzymes and vitamins and they may be of a very small quantity but they physiologically play a major role there in the cell system. Similar to nitrogen, Sulfur is also intracellularly present there in the reduced form that is sulfhydryl form. When you prepare a media there in the laboratory, sulfur is added in the growth medium in order to enhance the growth of the organism, mainly in the form of sulfate salt. The common one is a magnesium sulfate, which is providing both sulfur as well as magnesium for the growth of the organisms. Some microorganisms are incapable of reducing the oxidized form of sulfur that is sulfate form of sulfur into reduced form. So, for this group of organism you need to supply sulfur mainly in the reduced form that is as a cysteine or hydrogen sulfate. And the last point is inorganic sulfur compounds are involved there in the generation of energy, whereas the reduced sulfur compounds, hydrogen sulfide, thiosulfide as well as elemental sulfur are serving as an electron donor there in the organism such as sulfur oxidizing bacteria. At the same time, oxidized form of sulfur that is sulfate is serving as a terminal electron acceptor in, in the sulfur reducing bacteria that is capable of converting sulfate into hydrogen sulfide.